Welcome to this edition of CHDS Thesis Series. With me today is Steve Heitman, Fire Chief from Mercer Island Fire Department. Welcome, Steve. Thank you for having me. Your thesis focused on uh, PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. Can you tell me what uh, drew you to that topic and, and why it was important to you? It became important to me, uh, like most of the students, or I was struggling to try and find a topic. And believe it or not, one morning on my way to work, I was listening to the radio and they had put out a story of a firefighter that had committed suicide. And so that drew me to that subject and I decided to investigate it to see if there was information available that would serve uh, for doing a thesis. And sure enough, there was a lot of information that was available. So there was a lot of literature for you to draw upon. Uh, what were the central themes of your thesis? The central themes for it were getting the change in the firefighter culture. Uh, one of the biggest problems is that we don't talk about suicide or PTSD, any type of mental health issues, and that that was one thing that we needed to change. We typically are seen as the heroes, and so talking about anything of that nature can be seen as a sign of weakness, so most people are not open to that. And one of the things that we do is we focus a lot on physical training so that we're strong to do the, the job that we have to do, but we don't focus on mental health training at all. And so that was another theme that I explored within the paper as well. And then of course, putting the tools together. The tools are available to us already to help with this issue, but we have not taken the time to really put together a program in order to battle this problem. Well, let's talk more about the mental stress issues and, and why exactly um, some of the examples perhaps that, that you've experienced and um, how important that is for the mental health of a firefighter when they have to go into a very stressful environment. Can you give an example of, of where that might have been a, a problem? Yes, uh, recently I had a crew that responded to a car fire is what the call came in as. And as they pulled up on scene, everyone started doing their responsibilities. The engineer pulled the hose lines, got the pump up and running. The nozzleman grabbed the nozzle, started putting out the car fire. And the officer went to find uh, information out and found out that there was a victim. It turned out that not only was it a car fire, but it was a woman who had set herself on fire in order to commit suicide. And so the officer was left alone in dealing with this patient. And once he found her, she was struggling on the ground. He went to help stabilize her and she reached up and grabbed his hands and then her hands ended up degloving. So then he's trying to treat a patient by himself. The other two firefighters aren't aware of what's going on with this uh, situation as it was unfolding. And it was a lot to take in. So of course he's imprinting a very emotional response while he's trying to help this person. And you even go into some of the detail of how that imprints on the brain and why that's important for a lot of firefighters and public safety folks to understand that it is real and, and it can be very intense. Can you talk about that a little more? I can. There's a number of reasons that PTSD is a problem within it, from physical damage to the prefrontal cortex or the amygdala. There's also issues with amino acids or proteins that you may be low on that causes you to form stronger memories. What we're also seeing is that there are a lot of veterans that are being hired into the fire service. They understand the paramilitary organization, yet they may have already had the seeds of PTSD planted from all of the combat that we have experienced as a nation. And so that's not the explanation for why we're seeing this increase in PTSD and firefighter suicide, but it is definitely a factor. Taking that one example, you go on that response and you have the other guys that, you know, were doing the hoses and everything, but what happens to the guy normally uh, when he has a traumatic experience? He just goes back to the firehouse, deals with it on his own, or uh, what normally happens that you want Typically, to Typically what we do on an official, in an official capacity is that we have a critical incident stress debriefing, which means within about 24 to 72 hours, we bring in a mental health professional we bring in all the individuals that were involved in that call and they sit and they talk about what happened. You hope that they talk about how they feel, but we can't guarantee that that's what is occurring. Uh, unfortunately, it's been shown that we're bringing in this outsider who doesn't understand our culture and therefore people aren't willing to open up 
to that individual and, and express their true feelings. One of the things that's great about the fire service is we typically live together. 24 hour shifts is, is quite common. And so sitting around and talking about it as a group and ha what happened with the call is actually very healthy from a mental standpoint. So we're already doing a lot of this. It's just we didn't know um, how much it was helping us. Right. And so uh, talk about the, the suicide. I, I just wouldn't think that in, in the fire service that would be so prevalent. Can you talk about um, perhaps how prevalent it is? I can't. One of, one of the biggest issues is that we don't have accurate numbers. Right now, there is only one individual. He's a retired captain who is collecting the statistics on a website called Firefighter Behavioral Health uh, Association.org. And he, it's a voluntary program. So last year, they recorded 113 suicides for firefighters, which was a record. The year before that was 108. Over the last five years, we've had more suicides that have been recorded than the previous 150 years. And so it is a trend that is increasing. Again, though, the problem is we don't know the accuracy of that. Death certificates don't often record the occupation that an individual had, or the suicide could be a volunteer firefighter. And, and again, their main occupation, even if it were recorded, it wouldn't reflect that they had been a firefighter. And so the numbers themselves are something that we need to develop a process where it can be anonymous, but mandatory reporting if an individual commits suicide. So just to be clear, right now you have one person in, that you're aware of in the entire country that is recording this on a voluntary basis in terms of suicides. Yes. But then you have a whole other pool of people, of fire service professionals who are suffering from PTSD that may or may not seek help. That's correct. And add to that the veterans that are coming into the service who are bringing that with them. Yes. And the National Firefighter, Fallen Firefighters Foundation is doing work on this. They have their 16 uh, life safety initiatives. Number 13 is the mental health portion of this. And so they're making progress towards that, but they don't have a recording system. And in my research, I found that they don't communicate nor have a partnership with this Captain Jeff Dill who is recording those numbers. And so it, it's a broken connection that I think we need to fix uh, at a national level. I think the, uh, the United States Fire Administration should take a hand in, in making it so that it's mandatory reporting. It starts from the leadership, really, it sounds like, that they need to be more aware of, of the prevalence of this issue. I mean, most people think of cops and, and veterans as, as the P suffering from PTSD and having those issues, but um, I think a, a large part of our population is unaware of the prevalence of this issue in the fire service. That's, yes, I would agree with that 100%. The, the type of trauma that we're exposed to, you can have similar, seminal events like 9-11 or Katrina or the Oklahoma City bombing, and yes, we get a lot of PTSD out of that. Uh, FDNY is the one who's been heavily hit with that. But also, as firefighters, we're constantly responding to trauma. And so it, even if it doesn't impact you, it's that recurrent trauma that over time can build up. And then suddenly you find that you're not in the same place mentally that you have been for years. It hasn't bothered you. The other thing that we're finding is that a lot of retirees commit suicide. Uh, the theory that I followed within my thesis was the interpersonal theory of suicide. And their premise is that nobody just decides that they're going to commit suicide, that there are pieces that are put into place and it's, a, it's an event that happens over time. And the two main ones, if you can think of a Venn diagram, is thwarted belongingness. So when somebody retires, they don't feel like they belong to that group anymore. There isn't the cohesion. And the other one is um, being a burden, burdensomeness. You feel like that you are a burden on society, you're not contributing anymore, that what you do doesn't make a difference. And so as those overlap, you start getting the capability for suicide that occurs uh, in that intersection. The next thing that's needed or piece for this is the capacity for suicide. So as people spend time thinking about it and they, they fall deeper into this depressive cycle, then they start overcoming that capability and, and not not being able to overcome that. One of the strongest desires we have as humans is to maintain our, our life. But 
the problem with firefighters is that because we are exposed to death and trauma so much, the theory feels that we probably hit the capability for suicide much more quickly than the average citizen. And so as those three come together, that's where you get the um, suicide issues. It's a very small percentage, but it, it's from the numbers, you know, 113 that uh, committed suicide last year, it's huge. Wow. So you mentioned the national level and what, what can be done and making recommendations for that. But uh, what can the typical firefighter do? Uh, say he's uh, mid, to, mid to senior in the organization. How can he or she really um, help the mental health of his, his or her comrades? There's a program out there called Stress First Aid, which was developed off combat stress first aid out of the Marines because the military's done a lot for PTSD and suicide issues. They're having, I believe the last number I heard was about 22 service members a day are committing suicide. Mm -hmm. And so the Stress First Aid program, it, it's a peer counseling program so that you identify individuals in your organization that are willing to become peer counselors. And they are identified to those people that um, need help. And it's just somebody to talk to when you're not comfortable with sharing your information as you're sitting around uh, the fire station and just talking as a group. But if you need a little bit more in depth, they are trained in recognizing the signs and symptoms of PTSD, but also recognizing when an individual needs professional help. And so the second part of that, implement the Stress First Aid program, but also create partnerships with uh, mental health professionals so that you have a way for your individuals to transition to that next step when it, it, it's beyond the capacity of, of their peers. And you're a leader in your organization, a chief. What can chiefs do, deputy chiefs, uh, the leaders of those uh, firehouses and uh, organizations do to help their people? Create that culture of open communication, not making it so that it's shameful to talk about anything that may be portrayed as weakness, but implementing these programs and supporting the training for it. So it yes, it's going to cost money and it have to come out of the budget, but to justify that, uh, the prevention aspect of this will be huge compared to if you have loss of a firefighter. Not only are you losing that individual, you're having to pay to backfill them, you're losing all of their knowledge pool, everything that you've invested in them is potentially lost, and so it's a lot less costly to have a program set up. So supporting those programs and understanding the need for this and, and seeing it pushed up to that level where all departments are doing it. Well, thank you so much for bringing this very important topic to our attention and writing a thesis that's available on our digital library. Um, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate your time. Thank you.